Another important provision of the Recording Artist Agreement is the provision dealing with advances. What are advances? Well, advances are advance payment of royalties, and record companies advance uh, royalties for a number of reasons, primarily to record the album. And many times the advances, a certain dollar amount will be paid as an advance to produce an album. Those are called album fund advances, which means all of the cost of recording the albums have to be uh, taken out of that particular advance. On a major label level, a new artist might receive an album fund advance of fifty dollars to $100,000. For a mid-level artist, it might be one hundred dollars to $200,000. In the case of superstar artists, they might receive an album fund advance of three hundred to one million dollars. Now, independent labels also might pay in advance, but they're gonna be much smaller because they sell in smaller numbers. It can range from $2,500 for an album up to 25,000, depending on the genre of music that you're talking about. Album fund advances are paid to offset the cost of recording the album. That means paying for recording costs, paying for the recording studios, paying producers, arrangers, engineers. A part of the fund might be used for personal expenses of the artist. So let's say a new artist has a $100,000 uh, album fund. Out of that, the record company might designate $20,000 to be a personal advance to the artist. And the rest of the $80,000 is held in reserve to be used to pay all of the recording costs. And in an album fund basis, if there's anything left after the payment of all of the recording costs, that will also go to the artist. So the artist might have a designated $20,000, $80,000 for the recording costs, but if the recording costs only come to $60,000, that's an additional $20,000 left over that might also go to the artist. So the artist might end up receiving $40,000. All right, but let's look at the instance where the recording costs go over budget instead of $80,000. They need $90,000. Well, usually the artist then has to pay that difference or the record company has the right to terminate the contract. So it's very important for artists to stay within their recording budget. And here's the next very important point. All advances are recouped from the artist royalties. Now, many people think that the record company is loaning money to the artist to record the album. Well, it isn't a loan. It's a big difference between an advance and a loan. Why? In a loan with a bank, the bank, uh, if you buy a house, the bank is going to give you a mortgage and they're going to secure it against that house. If you don't pay the money back, the bank can sue you personally. They can go after your bank accounts. They can sell your car. They can sell the house to get that money back. That isn't the case uh, in a recording agreement where advances are made to the artist. The only way the record company can recoup that, that investment is to sell more records because that's only recoupable from the artist royalties. If the artist doesn't generate enough in royalties to pay that back, then the record company has to live with that. They can't pursue the artist personally for unrecouped royalties. I was told when I first started practicing law that it's important to get as big of an advance on royalties as possible. And at that time, people told me that if you don't get the money up front, it's unlikely that you're gonna see it on the back end. And as time went on, and over the past 20 or 30 years, I've really seen that to be the case. It's more important now than ever for artists to try to get an advance up front because unfortunately, it's unlikely that they're going to be in a position of recouping all of the cost. Why do I say that? Well, in addition to the album fund advances to produce the album, over the, camp, over the course of the last 20 or 30 years, record companies have added other costs that they consider to be advances against the artist royalties. What are those costs? One are video costs, the cost of producing videos are considered advances against the artist's royalties. If your contract is well negotiated by your attorney, only 50% of video costs will be recoupable from your artist's royalties. 
50% of your video cost recoupable from artist royalties. Companies will try to recoup 100%, but sometimes if you fight them on that point, they will agree to only recoup 50% of video costs. Why is that important? Well, it's very important because videos are pretty expensive. At one time, back in the 90s, some of the top video producers would charge a million dollars in a fund uh, to produce one video. Now, those costs have come down dramatically now, but a good video is probably at least going to cost you uh, $50,000 or more. And you'll find for each album, artists will produce uh, maybe three or four videos for three or four singles. So those video costs can be substantial. So video costs are now recoupable from artist royalties. Here's another point. Independent promotion costs. Independent promotion costs are also recoupable from artist royalties. What are independent promotion costs? Well, independent promoters are people that have special relationships with radio programmers. And although the internet is really taking off and YouTube and uh, viral uh, sensations are creating uh, a, a new wave of promotion in the music industry, radio, radio, terrestrial radio is still a very, very important part of the promotion mix. So it's very important for record companies to be able to hire these independent promoters who have special relationships with radio programmers to have the singles played. Now, the cost of paying these independent promoters is pretty substantial. It can range anywhere from $50,000 to $300,000 per single. Uh, so that's a very expensive cost. Let's say it's $50,000 per single. And let's say that an artist has a video that costs $50,000. Usually independent promotion cost, if you press the record company, can be recouped only at a 50% rate. So video, you, you want to try to get your video and independent uh, promotion cost recoupable at a 50% rate, not a 100% rate. So let's say that an artist has four singles off of their album. They cut four videos at $50,000 each. For each single, an independent promoter is hired at $50,000 per single. So you have $400,000 in cost. Half of that is recoupable from your artist royalties. Let's say the artist had a $100,000 recording fund. Well, you might have thought, well, all I have to initially is that all I have to do is recoup $100,000 in cost for my recording fund, and then I'm entitled to more royalties. But you have to also factor in the video cost and the independent promotion cost. So you've got another $200,000 on top of that. So now you have $300,000 that you have to recoup. So you can see it becomes pretty difficult for artists to be able to generate royalties beyond that initial advance. But let's look at the instance of a small independent label that you've signed with, and maybe your recording fund is only $25,000. And your video cost might be $2,500 per video. And you might produce four videos, and the independent promotion cost much, will be much smaller. They might be $2,500 per single as well. So that's an additional $20,000 on top of the $25,000 recording fund. Here's the thing with independent labels. Remember how I talked about sometimes independent labels enter into 50-50 profit sharing relationships with their artists? But when, you, when they enter into that 50-50 profit sharing artist, they recoup all of the costs, not 50% of the costs like major labels do for video cost and independent promotion cost. All of those costs have to be recouped before you get to the 50-50 split. So in today's music industry, it's kind of tough for an artist to ever be in a totally recouped position to be entitled to royalties beyond the initial advance. And here's usually how it works. If you're unrecouped after the first album, whether or not you're on a major label or an independent label, but you've sold a significant number of copies, 
usually the label is going to want to pick up the option for the next album, at which point you're entitled to an additional advance for the production of that album. So even though that unrecouped account will transfer over to the second album, that's called cross-collateralization, from one album to the next, you the artist still would have made money from that advance for the second album. And most artists now generate royalties through advances. And trust me, if you sold a significant amount of albums for your first album, your attorney is going to be on the line to the business affairs person at the record company arguing for a renegotiated higher advance for the second album. And that's why I say that it's important to get as much as you can up front. That theory is still true. It was true 30 years ago, and it's still true today.